Nilu is a very unique Hydro character, or as I would argue, that she's not a Hydro character because what she is intended to do is to buff Bloom damage. And also she has a unique playstyle as well as building her own team composition. In today's video, we're going to be looking to Nilu's kit and talents, as well as if she is worth pulling for your account or not. Alright, let's jump into the video. Hey yo, what is going on guys? Welcome back to another Genshin Impact video and you guys like the intro? I might add that kind of stuff into the videos nowadays, but anyways, we got our little dancing queen right here and we're obviously, like what I said before, we're going to be breaking down her kit. So, without further ado, let's go into her talents. Okay, so, here's Nilu's stats, so this is what I'm running with Nilu. As you can see, she has 57k HP. Reason why it's super high is because I have Hydra Resonance, so roughly she would probably have about like 55k-ish HP, but still. That is her stats overall. You may notice her EM as well as her HP is quite high. If you look at my stats here, crit ratio isn't the biggest deal because we'll get into the reason why. All that matters for Nilu, as you can probably notice, is you want to stack up as much HP as possible. Elemental Mastery also helps. So, here is her gear. I'm running Iron Sting. This is a free-to-play craftable weapon that you can craft already when you start off in the game. And for her artifacts, I'm currently running with two-piece Guild of Dreams and two-piece Tenacity. I think the two-piece Guild of Dreams might be replaced eventually with the two-piece new HP set that's coming out. Because more HP will give her more bloom scaling damage. But, basically, if we go into her talents real quick, very unique character, but very simple in terms of her design. So, obviously, if you notice her normal attacks, you don't, you never upgrade these at all. Uh, even if you're gonna do physical damage, I mean, don't even bother. Her skill and burst is actually, what's interesting about it is you don't really need to upgrade her talents. But let's just individually break down what each of the skill does, and obviously what the burst does. So, the dance of the Harvester Karsvar. The dance of the Harvester Karsvar. I don't know if I pronounced that. I'm sorry about that. So, basically, what it does is she has two ways of using her elemental skill. When you keep pressing her E, or her elemental skill, she'll do a different dance move. Or when you press E once and then you do normal attacks instead, it'll also do two different types of dance moves. I know it sounds a little bit complicated, but I'll try to make it as simple as possible. Basically, you can use it two ways. We can keep pressing her elemental skill or you keep, keep pressing her normal attacks and at the result, it'll create a different kind of effect. You can actually mix up the combination as well, which I will get deep into it in the end of this video. Whenever you use in three stances, Nilu's third dance step, so basically the third time you use her skill, will have a different effect, which is what I mentioned before. So basically, whenever you tap her elemental skill, that's when it will create is more of a hydro aura that's going to be surrounding around her. Kind of like Barbara's elemental skill. And if you just keep pressing normal attacks with Nilu, it'll basically infuse all of her normal attacks into hydro damage. You cannot do any charge or plunge attack in that infusion. As you can see, there are many playstyles you could use with her elemental skill. However, there is a recommended playstyle that I will go more into depth at the end of this video. So... As you can see, the scaling wise, it is basically her best talent to upgrade if you want to increase her damage. However, you don't really necessarily need to upgrade this much in terms of investment because what I mentioned at the very beginning of this video is that she's more of a team buffer rather than a DPS. If we go into her skill damage, sword dance, whirling, the uh, steps, right? Basically, this just increases every time she uses her steps and then here's the duration as well. As you can see, both stances have their own duration. So with the first one, Lunar Prayer Duration, that's the normal attack infusion, has about 8 seconds. And the Tranquility or Duration has about 12 seconds. And the cooldown is 18 seconds. So. Now for Elemental Burst, it's very straightforward. She does AoE Hydro Damage. It applies Hydro to all opponents affected by her burst. And it'll take twice of Hydro Damage consecutively. So, yeah. Pretty simple, uh, has decent amount of scaling as well since she again scales with HP, this has a lot, and yeah, that's about it. So what's most important honestly is going on to her passives. First passive just basically talks about what I was mentioning before about how she doesn't really need to upgrade her talents because she's more of a buffer. So here's one of the talents here real quick. When all characters in the party members are Dendro or Hydro, and there are at least one Dendro character and one Hydro character, then you get this passive here. So that means if you use any other elements besides Dendro or Hydro, you need at least one Dendro and one Hydro, then you will not be able to grant this effect. That's what is the controversial part about Nilu at the time when she was released. Nilu at the time, she was kind of considered one of the most niche characters and she was extremely restrictive as well. She's still arguably restrictive as of right now, but ever since her first debut release, Till now, Nilu has a lot more Dendro options and a lot of Hydro options as well. 
So basically, when you use her elemental skill, it'll grant all nearby characters the golden chalice bounty for 30 seconds. That's a very long time. And then anyone that's under this will gain 100 elemental mastery for 10 seconds whenever they are hit by dendro attacks. Also, triggering the bloom reaction will create bountiful cores instead of dendro cores. So this is where this is really important. So just pay attention here for this part. So bountiful cores instead of dendro cores, which has a different effect as well. Such cores will burst very quickly after being created, and they will have larger AOEs. Bountiful cores cannot trigger Hyper Bloom or Burgeon, so that means you cannot create other reactions while doing Bountiful cores, and then they share an upper numerical limit with Dendro cores. Bountiful core damage is considered damage dealt by Dendro cores produced by Bloom. Should the party not meet the conditions for this passive talents, and any existing Gold Chalice's bounty effects will be cancelled. So that means you cannot do any other reactions besides to create this Bountiful core reaction. And it just basically converts regular Bloom Seeds into Bountiful Cores. That's the whole idea. This is more of a buffed version of the Bloom Seed reaction. Now, if we go into here, basically every 1,000 points of Nilu's max HP above 30,000 will cause the damage dealt by the Bountiful Cores created by the characters affected by Golden Chalice Bounty to increase by 9%. Maximum increase in Bountiful Cores damage that can be achieved this way is 400%. Basically, this is the reason why you want to stack up with her as much HP as possible because you are buffing the Bountiful Core's damage even further. And this is basically anything that's a lot higher than 30,000 HP will give out, grant you each 1,000 points, 9% bonus damage. So that's why you want to build her as much HP as possible. For Explorer to Passive, she has the perfect cookie thing. So yeah. Constellation wise, I honestly, it doesn't, is not needed, but I'll just briefly break it down what it does. C1 increases the duration for the aura and also it gives out 65% more damage to her normal attack infusion. That's kind of cool if you want to use her for, um, you know, making her on field. C2 is basically, this is a, only the cool constellation in my opinion. Basically, this decreases Hydra resistance as well as Dendro resistance uh, after the Golden Chalice's bounty deal Hydra damage to an opponent. And yeah. That's it. Same idea for Dendro as well. Whenever you create Bloom Reaction, you also get Dendro Resistance Decrease. So that means you deal a lot more uh, Bloom damage as well as Hydro damage. It's kind of nice. Uh, C3, three levels up to her burst, not needed. C4, Dance of her skill. Pirouettes hits upon the level, gain 50 elements of energy and damage from her Dance of her burst, basically, will be increased by 50% for 8 seconds. This is basically more of a nice, like, burst DPS kind of constellation. Again, not needed because that's not where her kit focuses on anyway. Three levels up to her skill, not needed. And C6, 1,000 max points of uh, max HP, needless crit rate and crit damage will be increased by 0.6 and 1.2 respectively. The maximum increase in crit rate and crit damage via this method is 30% and 60% respectively. So this means this is just more of a personal DPS increase. Again, not necessarily needed because Nilu already at C0 offers everything at her base. Everything else is just more of excessive personal damage besides C2. Alright, so onto artifacts. I already mentioned this before, but basically you can just run in anything with Nilu. As of right now, she doesn't have a best in slot 4 piece set. So I just normally run her with just more of a 2 piece whatever stats she needs, which that would be HP. And as currently right now, we only have one HP 2 piece set. But in the next update, we will get another HP set, which I'm assuming that's probably going to be her best two-piece combination. And for subsets, as you can see, it's very straightforward. You're just going to basically want all HP. That's your number one priority. And for the other offensive stats, if you can gain it, which is crit or EM, that's very nice as well. As you can see, this is my subsets. For the main stats, for the Sands, Goblet, and Circlet, as you could probably guess, you're going to want all triple main stat HP. But if you are going Hydro Bane DPS Nilu, which personally I wouldn't recommend it, but if you know you want to try that build out, then I would probably go with HP, Hydro Goblet, and Crit Circlet. For weapons, she has like a lot of options as well. Like in terms of like her builds, it's extremely flexible because you know all she really scale with is HP. So if you have her signature weapon, that's obviously going to be her number one best in slot. But as of right now, she doesn't really have anything else that's kind of good on her. I mean, you could probably use like some support weapons that could work for her, like Sapwood Blade. You know, just gain your uh, character's elemental mastery, or you can get uh you know Iron Sting, right? Just for her own personal boost on damage. Or the previous event weapon, right? Anything works as long as, you know, it's somewhat supporting herself's DPS as well as her team's DPS. She doesn't really have a best in slot sword besides her signature weapon. Okay, so on to Nilu's team composition where this was her controversy for her first debut release. She lacked a lot of Dendro supports at the time and there was not too many Hydro characters either. And we've kind of gotten a bit more since then as well as we've discovered that certain characters kind of works pretty well with Nilu. She also is... I would say kind of free-to-play friendly, so here we go. 
So there's a lot of options. In my personal number one recommendation for Dendro support, it's going to be Nahida. Like, Nahida, I mean, she's pretty much going to be literally on every single Dendro team. So maybe, you know, if you have a stronger Dendro team that's better than your Nilu team, then, you know, you have you want some other options, right? So we have a lot of options. My second option would probably be Dendro Traveler. He has a lot of good Dendro application off-field. He's also really great for, like, endless waves of opponents that just keep spawning as long as, you know, the opponents are inside the Dendro field from his elemental burst that's basically it he's an off-field dendrit applicator but he gets the job pretty done in a solid fashion another option i would say is yao yao she is a dendro healer she's also very powerful in terms of whenever she heals only when she's in her elemental burst though but when it, with her elemental skill wise dendro application kind of does lack a lot and healing wise is not as much compared to her burst so she is kind of like a character where you want to keep using her burst every time but once you get her burst, it's a lot of dendro application at once, plus a lot of healings to recover from Nilo's Bountiful Cores, because again, the Bountiful Cores deals self-damage dendro explosion, which your characters actually can take a lot of damage. So that's why, whenever it comes to Nilo's team composition, you actually want at least one healer in there so that, you know, you don't die from your own dendro core explosion. So then, now on to other dendro supports. We also have, you can use Kale as well. Pretty much any dendro character fits in here. Although, Kale, in my opinion, is probably the least you want to use because, you know, Kale's has a little bit short duration for her elemental burst. Also, she has some ICD issue as well. But other than that, she is still a flex option if you need one more Dendro member on your team party member, then you can use that. Other Dendro characters I didn't mention are basically either like DPS oriented, which doesn't really fit this well with this type of team comp. Basically, the whole idea for the Dendro member is as long as they can apply Dendro. That's the whole idea is as long as you apply Dendro, or offer some sort of defensive utility, then they work pretty well. For Hydro, it's very easy as well. Uh, you can use anything. You can you can even you can even rearrange how this goes. You can even run just one Hydro character and triple Dendro if you want to. But to balance out the application for both Hydro and Dendro, I personally like to go with double Hydro, double Dendro, just to make it work. Unless you have Nahida, then you can even pull off triple Hydro and one Dendro because Nahida is a catalyst. But this goes along with whatever team composition you have. But Hydro, there's a lot of options. If you are lacking a healer, there's actually Kokomi you can use, which she is a great Hydro applicator, both on-field and off-field. Also offers a lot of defensive utility, which is her healing. It's one of the best in the game. Another option you can use, which, you know, was slightly kind of eh at the time. So kind of eh at the right now, but it's Barbara. She is a free-to-play version you can use, which Barbara is, you know, like Kokomi basically, but slightly worse. But she's a Hydro Catalyst, which means that, you know, if you do have great damage off-field application, you have Barbara, which can keep triggering Bountiful Cores and hence creating more Bloom Reaction. That's a decent option that you can use. Other than that, like, any other Hydro character can technically work uh, as long as they have good Hydro application. So I'll, I'll only list the ones I personally won't recommend uh, in terms of, like, team composition-wise. So Bona, I personally wouldn't recommend. Tartaglia, I wouldn't really recommend. Both of them have, like, limited Hydro application. Uh, but other than that, Candace is also decent as well. You can offer Hydro Infusion to any of your active character that has her elemental burst on field. I just haven't personally used it yet, but I heard it's decent. Uh, and Ayato is good. Pretty much any other Hydro character, as long as they have good Hydro application, and which is probably not Mona or Tartaglia. I guess Mona, you still can with her you know, normal attack since she's Catalyst, but there's just, you know, you might as well use Barbara instead and use Mona for a better team composition that's suited for her more. So, this is more of my recommendation team, or you can just switch this around a bit. You can even have, like, if you want more offense, you could probably replace Xingxiu with Yelan, Nahida with, uh, whatever, right? You know, you can do anything you want. As long as the whole idea is you have Hydra and Dendra only, then that's your Nilu team. Uh, here's- this is my more comfy team for Nilu, but you can switch it around a bit. This is more of a free-to-play team if this is all you have in terms of, like, starting off with Nilu and stuff. And this is all the free-to-play characters that you have accessibly available, then this is all you have. This is fine as well. It is technically her lowest damage ceiling team overall, so you won't see too much of a difference. However, with the more Dendro characters and Hydro characters, you will start to collect and investing to this team, it's quite a worth of an investment. Like, obviously, you're placing Kale with, let's say, Yao Yao, for example. Oh, and then you get a better Hydro unit like Xing Shou. 
and then it becomes a solid team already. And then when you get a, yourself a better Dendra Applicator than Nahida, it ends so up like this. So that's why this team works pretty well. Let's move on to the Nilu Showcase. Alright, so we're going to showcase Nilu's attack combinations from my own personal recommendation as well as other content creators' recommendation. It's basically the same idea and as well as what her gameplay should look like. So, you remember how I mentioned before that you can mix up her dance combination, right? So, basically how I would do it is I would go E first, then normal attack, then normal attack again. And then, as you see, there's a third step, right? Then elemental skill, then she creates this aura surrounding her. So... This is what you want to do. In my personal experience, you would rarely use her normal attack infusion. That means, you know, in order to get the normal attack infusion, you have to complete her third final step to gain that last, you know, effect you want, right? Which is either normal attack infusion or her elemental skill aura thing. Let me do a serious showcase real quick. So, this is how it would normally go. As you can see, this is a lot more damage dealt in, and that's it. It's just all Dendro reactions. And as you can see, it is that simple. Even with single target too, because of how fast you're able to generate her cores, it's actually pretty solid for a single target as well, as you can see. Okay, so overall, that was Nilu's sh gameplay as well as her talents. So, the question is, is she worth pulling for? The answer is, this depends on your personal playstyle as well as your current financial status on your account. Which, what I mean by that is, of course, your primo gems. If you want Nilu, which, by the way, she's definitely worth it. Uh, but if you want Nilu, she is going to be a very strong Dendro buffer option that you can use as well she's going to be a very solid character to add in your team just a very very unique playstyle that you might yourself have to get used to make sure you're obviously before you summon the character you try them out in the character trial first before you summon for the character but if you like her playstyle as well as you are very interested in her unique playstyle and gameplay then she is a very cool option to get. She's going to get better and better, only better and better, especially when there's more Dendro characters coming too, like Baizu and Kave, which seems to be, you know, more Nilu team options that they can add in there as well. Then Nilu is just only going to get better and better at this point. Summon for her if you want her. Uh, just keep in mind that she has a very, very strict team building restriction because of how her talents work. But what she does in her own niche is very powerful. So overall, Nilu is very awesome so if you guys enjoyed this video make sure you guys hit that like button as well subscribe to the channel for more of this type of content and out of that that's all i got thank you all so much for watching and as always until next time stay epic and peace out